Oh, that's so good. Good to see you. This is Lila. Hi, Lila. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Awesome. Hi. Well, I Please, thought you were bringing. Go. You're not bringing the spaghetti. What was the? <laughs> what? You said in your email, ready spaghetti. I thought. You know, ready. Oh come on. Ready. Which deck you at? We got plates and stuff. Oh we my have... god, you do. Did is you really this the, that's part? Of, is this part of the new guest thing? Like if you. No. We didn't need Scott, dinner. We didn't need dinner because we. You said in your email, ready spaghetti. Ready, ready spaghetti. Me that me. means you're. It's an expression, like like uh, later pasta, gator or pasta. something like yeah yeah like hey, later uh, gator. What about what pasta? You have a pasta? Dude no, like pasta la pasta, like eh, you know. Yeah, well yeah, later. another expression. Oh, so you don't have pasta? So, so then no interview. <laughs> Wait, uh, so yeah, we'll just do the interview on an empty stomach. On oh, empty yeah. stomachs, yeah. 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 Uh, Lila was Lila's role didn't really require dancing, but yeah. um, literally it was like she came in right at the end, and it was I, I think I met you as you were like did this little lap dance on me. It was like, hey, my name's Tom. Hey, I'm Lila. Okay, it's action! Funny, yeah. And then she's lap dancing me. I'm like, wow, that's, <laughs> I, either be he an actor. organized that, but I don't know. That happens. That seems to happen in every movie. The first scene of every movie, you're working with new cast, new people, and it's a love scene. It's or always the awkward out scene. Or yeah, yeah. Always the awkward <laughs> scene. And so that was our our first. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. And you guys are doing a pilot now too, right? Yeah. A fuzz. Yes. Tell us about that. Well, basically, uh, it goes back to an, an interview I had heard with uh, Dennis Farina, the actor Dennis Farina, who was a former Chicago cop, and he they had asked him what's what's the most realistic cop show of all time, and mm-hmm. he said, "What would you guess? You want to guess? Most realistic? Blues. Yeah. So what? What Cop rock. No, it's um, <laughs> hey, cop rock. It was. Um, he said, on Jump Street. Yeah, he said no. NYPD <laughs> Blue. <laughs> he said. Yeah. He said Barney Miller. Oh, and uh, okay. he says, because the thing is, what you do, you, most of the time you're in the squad room dealing with paperwork, and you can't handle that level of stress without joking around and, and being idiots and playing pranks on each other. And Barney Miller, it's good to note, they weren't like Reno 911 where they were inept cops. They were good cops. They were just joking around the whole time. Mm-hmm. So what happened was I got a, a guy, former NYPD guy named Scott Baker, who had written a great book called The Funniest Cop Stories Ever Told. Nice. And they were all true cop stories. The book sold. It's in Barnes & Noble. It's, it was all over the place. And he had wrote a pilot, so I took it and I rewrote it and polished it up. Up. And it's basically, I would say, it's Barney Miller for the new millennium. It's uh, cool. it's it cool. takes place in a squad room, and it's just fun. And you know what? It goes back down to what I believe sitcoms. They do these crazy concepts now, and they never last. Um, and it's like Cheers was guys in a bar having fun. You know right. what I mean? It, friends were friends. You know, right. Seinfeld. There was about nothing when they have these crazy concepts. You know, it's about you know the the guy who invented tables, but now he's paralyzed and he's in his bed. And it's like, what the hell is that? <laughs> Well, I was just oh, fire away. wondering, was Son of the Beach as much fun to make as it was to watch? I mean, it was a hilarious show. It was Thank full you. of lovely ladies. Oh, thanks. But was it a fun job? It was a really fun job. We we had a blast every day. We cool. constantly cracked up, ruined take after take after take. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie and I, the other girl, we would um, we would make up dialogue that the extras were talking about behind our backs while we were in our bikinis. Okay. <laughs> because, you know, okay. they were all staring at us, and sure. we we're like, ooh, wow, they're looking at the dimple on the right butt cheek right Whoa. now. <laughs> now, did, uh, did Howard Stern ever show up on set a lot, or was he mostly just stuck in New York? Howard was in New York most of the time, but he came a couple times, and cool. we went out there a bunch. I was on his show like four or five times. Excellent. He's crazy and fun and really a sweet guy. Yeah, yeah. that's what I hear. He lured me to his apartment one night. Though. Oh, no, why? Yes. <laughs> dirty, dirty How dog. How did that go? He, <laughs> it was an audition. And he actually used quotes when he said it. <laughs> He's like, I can get you on the show. I'm like, Howard, I'm on the show. <laughs> <laughs> David, you got a question for us? Yes, I was wondering. I was in a supermarket the other day, and I was reading The Inquirer, and apparently uh, Betty White had said that Tom Malloy was the sexiest man that she had ever worked with. Whoa. That she had ever what? Did she? She ever Ever worked with. Ever worked worked with. with. Wow. Wow. Really? Wow. Well, prowess. Way to go, Tom. Let's put it this way. 89 years old. Um and I'm sure my wife's listening, I would have had sex with Betty White. I'm sorry, I'll tell you right now. It's just, you know, it's one of those things, when in Rome, if she wanted to do it, I would have been there. I'm sorry. It's just, so what, it's a, you can't so say no to that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, wow. just like with Betty White. And know? it sounds like it would have been pretty easy. Where that line came from. Yeah, exactly. get laid tonight, right? It, in the film, that's <laughs> good point. Wow. It, it is, she does say, i got to get laid tonight in the movie, yes. But I don't think there's one person in this room that wouldn't do it. And, right. I, and that's including Lila, by the way. Hi-oh. I mean, <laughs> Wow. I play one on TV. <laughs> I don't know if we can have Betty on the show now after all this. Yeah. Uh, 
Well, we'll pull some strings. Can I say this? That I dipped her, and it was a gentle dip. She's uh-huh. 89 years old. And I thought, man, I really stopped. You can see in the movie, kind of stopped myself on the dip because I didn't want to be the guy known as the guy that killed right. Betty White. Right. Because I don't. You, no matter what you do in your life, you could win the Nobel Peace Prize, right. you'd still be like that jerk that killed Betty White. Right. Yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's a scary thing. Yeah, exactly. If you broke her in any way, even if she didn't die. I think you'd, yeah, be, you'd be done. You'd be in big be trouble. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Even yeah. if you were the guy who sprained Betty White's wrist. I yeah, that'd be know. yeah that guy. I mean, yeah. Lila, are you aware that there are video slideshows made of you on YouTube? Whoa! What? Yes, and I'm, this is to me a sign. It took me a while to make those. This is a sign that somebody's made it, and I just want, I was curious if you were aware. <laughs> you you have made it because That's funny. yes, you type in your name in YouTube, you'll find just pictures fading in and out to music. Awesome. From Maxim? Sure, yeah, shots from Maxim? I don't know if it... Uh, Gonna have to check maybe. that out. Maybe. Yes, you were one of Maxim's hot 100. I was, yes. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm sure some of them were from Maxim, but... it's great. Interesting. Yeah. Awesome. I'm going to go check that and out. And then it has your, your, your home address. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go look for that. Now, you have uh, a book about financing films, and now you have CDs, too. I do, I do. Um, it was... I, I wrote a book called Bankroll about uh, financing movies, and... Uh, it became like one of the best reviewed books on film financing, you know, but it was a, it was a different publisher had put the, you know, they'd pay me in advance to write it and all that. Mm. But people wanted more and they wanted more in depth. And they also liked when I spoke at seminars, but I gave so much information that it was just too much. Uh-huh. So I put together a, a six Tom, CD um, set. can talk. Yeah, I could. <laughs> it, it, side oh, note please. on that, but I did the. Uh, In case anyone didn't. Yeah, the, the alphabet killer. I did the DVD commentary for it, oh, and sweet. I alone, and because the, uh-huh. the other two, Rob Schmidt and uh, the producer Ison Robbins, were in New York City, and the guy says, "Look, you're not going to be able to make it through all this. So when you stop, just look at me, and I'll give you a new topic." And I was like, "Okay," <laughs> and I went all the way through. Nice. I think I stopped to blow my nose, and he goes. Two people. He says, I've done that 15 years. He says, Michael Mann and Bill Condon, the only people that have done that besides wow. you. So wow. I do like to talk. But anyway, back on task. <laughs> if Steve and I faint tonight, you yeah, guys have yeah, a yeah, I got it. No problem. <laughs> and I'm going to take, take, I'm gonna take a shotgun, by the way. And uh, anyway, no, it's uh, – it, it, I basically recorded five and a half hours of material in a studio and on six CDs on how to finance films and say all the secrets that I know and, and things and you know I really want to help people put their films together so it's if you go to bankrollthebook.com it's on there and it's it's $129 but literally six CDs you can listen to over and over and over again and it's Excellent. tremendous value so like and you have a nice voice so yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah do it lovely lovely I was drunk it's... when I recorded it that's <laughs> oh, the problem yeah. right. yeah. that would actually be a great idea for a book on tape like yeah. If you were drinking while you did the tape. Oh, I oh, love fantastic. it. Yes. And, like they, they hear the progression. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's classic. Wow. That's really fun. I actually think I would sound the same the whole way through. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 Is that because you think you always sound drunk, or because? <laughs> yeah. No, I don't think. I think Lila and we've we've had many parties together. Yes. I, I can't. I've never been able to look at her and be like she's wasted. Like no, she, okay. she hides oh. it well. And I have been. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yes. 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 Yeah. <laughs> I think I just look the same and I sound the same the whole way through until. I'm done. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's what she's out. It's like yeah, a yeah. mutant power. Well, there's four types of drunks. You know, do you know that, that there's the philosopher, uh-huh. which is a shout out to my wife Emily. She will she'll give you the philosophy. Which, <laughs> and then uh, there's the happy drunk, which I think both of us are. Yes, okay. And then there's the uh, catatonic, which is like you know, uh, it sits there. And then there's the fighting drunk, you know, which oh, is right. thankfully the teeny little percentage, and there's not really many fighting drunks. But I had friends in college that were like. Keep drinking, like I'm gonna fight that guy. You know, like after you know, six beer, that's right. The guy. Right. That's, that's my guy. guy. I'm still looking at me. Yeah, exactly. And then there's the racist drunk. <laughs> yeah, the racist. Yeah, yeah. racist that's Steve. Yeah. 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 I am the Ooh. I am the karaoke drunk. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's true. I guess. Yeah. I think it's a form of philosopher. It's just coming out through song. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> Where's all the Elton John? Um, Layla, what can you, Lila? Yeah. Gosh, why do there I keep is. saying it the wrong way? <laughs> you can spank me at the break. I um, will. Lila, you were in a perfect fit with Entourage's Adrian Grenier. Grenier. It's and true. Skylar wrote down the question: Does he egg a wall? Does he throw an egg at a wall? In that in trailer, that when you, you say, you, that say you're pregnant? you say I'm pregnant, and he goes, <laughs> and he throws an egg at a wall wow. or something, doesn't he? He does. He does throw an egg at a wall at the refrigerator. That's oh, very, at the refrigerator. Yes. That's very symbolic. That's what I did when my wife told me she <laughs> was pregnant. <laughs> very symbolic. Yeah, yeah. some, wow. some writer was sitting there going yeah. like, I got something good. Oh yeah. yeah. Didn't even think about egg. that. Wow. Do you guys know that my car got egged three days ago? Three oh, right. Who does that? Yeah, it's awesome. That's, sorry about that. That was just, yeah. <laughs> I could understand if it happened tomorrow for April Fool's. Yeah, right. Right. Days ago. right. It was definitely a preemptive April Fool's. Oh, March twenty seventh is Egg Day. You it, all know that. It is. Yeah. Are there <laughs> are there rascally teens in your neighborhood? I mean, I didn't think so, no? but apparently there are.